Proverbs chapter 29. He that being often reproved hardened his neck. There are some people who, who keep getting in trouble, keep going, getting in trouble, and then it gets worse and worse. Instead of getting right, they get worse. And God's going to have to drop the axe, drop judgment. That's a picture when you see Israel. God sent prophets, Judah. God sent prophets. God sent men of God. They mistreated them. They didn't listen to them. They didn't get right. And it's a sorry state. And when somebody won't listen, shall suddenly be destroyed. And that without remedy. For some Christians, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from unrighteousness. Sometimes a Christian may go so far, God's like, God told Jeremiah, don't even pray for him. I've had it. I'm done with him. And you don't ever want to get in that state where you it's too late for help. Thank God for God's long suffering, God's patience. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Typically true. But the people that don't rejoice are those who are not righteous. But the wicked beareth rule, that be the Antichrist, the people mourn. And we live in such a perverted, perverse world today. The world is so anti-Bible. As we get closer and closer to the last day, even God's Christians, the church, the people, are going to get apostate. They're going to get worse. And when we have a wicked government today, people are happy and they promote them. And, you know, the worst thing would happen to America, and I'm not put, we're done with politics, but you know what the worst thing would be for America? If you would get a Bible-believing, saved Christian in the White House. Or a House seat, or a Senate seat. The world would be against it, because the Bible said, Jesus said, know that the world hated me before it hated you. John said, marvel not, the world hates you. And if we did get a righteous man in authority, the people would be against him. And there are some people say, well, I think Christians should get into politics. Why? No one's going to love them if they're not saved. No one's going to, listen, even the own Christians wouldn't love them. I've got Christians who hate my guts, despise me because I preach and say the truth. They're Christians. They say they're going to heaven. I, I'm right and try to do right, try to live towards the Bible. I'm a sinner. They don't rejoice with me. They unfriend me. Whoso loveth wisdom rejoices his father. A child. A child that wants to grow in the Lord, wants to do right. But he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance and that's the prodigal son spend your life with the wrong people and you're going to get the wrong ways you're going to get the wrong attitudes you're not going to get what's right you put a bad apple amongst apples you're going to have a bunch of bad apples it's true the king by judgment established the land jesus christ and Jesus Christ will be will bring judgment. He will bring authority with the rod of iron. And people are not going to like it. They're going to hate it. But I don't think Jesus cares. I'm just making a note here because I missed it.
And we're looking at the Lord Jesus Christ at his second advent. Right there. Even I learned. And the land will be the land of Israel, not America. The land will be the, the Palestine, the land given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not England. The land where Jesus Christ will sit in Jerusalem upon David's throne, not Germany, China. But he that receiveth gifts overthrow it. Now that's not Jesus' kingdom. Bribes. You know what's overthrowing the government of America? This is not political. This is the truth. When big companies go to senators and, and representatives and the president and the vice president and mayors and uh, governors and when they put forth their bribes and they're whining and dining when they use their money and their influence, whether it be goods or actual money or products or whatever, they offer the position of any government official. At that point, you're starting to, you're decaying your nation. You're decaying your nation because of lacker, lack of proper judgment and wisdom. A man that flattereth his neighbor, spreadeth a net for his feet. It's an evil motive flattery. I'm just going to sweet talk. And he's building a net not only for his neighbor. But he's also building a net for himself. Because be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man sow, that he shall also reap. You see, flattery is what I can get for you being a nice, sweet, buttery mouth. That I can swindle you, deceive you, and you think I'm doing you a good thing and anybody that studies the bible from genesis to revelation will come to realize you're going to reap what you sow in the transgression of an evil man there is a snare a trap that's what a snare is so every transgression the evil man does, there's a trap. There's there's a pitfall coming for him. But the righteous do sing and rejoice. The righteous are happy. The evil man in his transgression is going to be snagged. He's going to be hampered. And that don't bring happiness. The righteous consider the cause of the poor. We look at and we study. And we are assured that we're going to help somebody that they are true. We're not just going to throw our money and watch it where it lays. But the, re but the wicked regardeth not to know it. The wicked don't care about the poor. Judas was one of the, you know, he cared for the poor. And, and he was all upset that, that Mary, uh, the alabaster box, has wasted everything she had for Jesus. And that's when he went to go talk to the, the priests, seeking how he might deceive Jesus. And catching him at his words. Again, this is not political. There are people in, in government. And they will go on the platform. We want to help the poor. We want to you know, tax the rich for the poor. And they don't care about the poor. 
They're not going to live with the poor. They're not going to invite the poor into their house. They're not going to put the money into a poor man's hat. They're going to take your money and put it in a poor man's hat. And when we come into the aspect of the wicked, when we look at the Antichrist, the people under his authority, the poor people under the government of the Antichrist or reign of the Antichrist, he's not going to care about because those will be the people that don't have his mark, don't have his name, or don't have his number. And he won't care about them. And he'll want them dead. Remember in the tribulation period that, that's to come. The next great event outside the rapture. The tribulation period is coming. There is no more middle class. You're either going to be rich with the mark. Or you're going to be poor without the mark. <clears throat> Scornful men bring a city into a snare. A trap. And we see that with, with the ministry we have at the Daytona Beach, the, the farmer's market. There are men there. We don't like the, the preaching of Jesus. We don't like the preacher. We're going to go to the city council. We're going to go to the city lawyers. We're going to go to the people in charge of the farmer's market. We're going to go to the mayor of the city. And we're going to try to shut the preacher up. And there may be a time, <clears throat> I know it's not now, they'll get me for my throat. There may be a time because of that, that God will say, wipe off the dust of your feet, you're done with Daytona. And then Daytona would be damned. Because of those people that reject the gospel, those people that hate the preaching, those people that hate Jesus. And they put the city in a trap. Jesus told his disciples, if they don't receive the word and won't listen to you, walk out of the city and wipe off the dust off your sandals. It'd be better for this city than that city. But wise men turn away to wrath. So a scornful man is not wise and will entrap a city where a wise man who is not scorning will appease the wrath of God. Or a wrath of an enemy. <coughs> If a wise man contendeth, argues, fights with a foolish man, whether he rage, really angry, or laugh, think it's a joke, there is no rest, there is no peace. And both of you look like an idiot. And in public ministry, I believe we've all been guilty of this verse. I mean, our hearts and desire is that this person will turn to Jesus Christ. And if I keep on going and arguing with this fool, he's not going to be foolish any longer, but yet Proverbs says that's not so. He may get angry with you. He may laugh at you, but you're not getting anywhere. And probably people are watching. The bloodthirsty hate the upright. There it is. People who want to do harm. People who would want to murder. People who want to take someone's life. They don't like. They hate. That's supposed to be a bad, wicked word. There are people right now in 2020 in, in November, they're out causing terror in the streets of America. And if a righteous man were come through and an upright man would come in there, they would attack. 
They have attacked people's businesses and destroyed their businesses. And the, the business over, you know, they're just trying to have a business. They're just trying to do right. And these people hate that business person because, you know, look, he's got money. Look, look he's got a repetition. He's doing well. We got to burn it all down. We got to destroy it all. And that upright man may have been no offense to the bloodthirsty. But because he's doing right, we hate him. And that's the story of Jesus. He did right and the priest bloodthirsty wanting to kill and destroy and get rid of Jesus. They hated Jesus. But the just seeketh his soul. A right man, a Christian, today in the church age, there is somebody that, that hates the Christian soul. There are people that hate me at the farmer's market because of the gospel. And my prayers and my aim is, oh, they would just get right and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And they want me dead. They want me gone. They don't want me there. I want them to be saved and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The fool other is all his mind, which ain't much, because he's a fool. It don't take long. But the wise man keepeth it into keepeth it until afterwards. The wise man will think before he talks. The fool will just let it all out. And the wise man will ponder. And diligently search his heart. Do I really need to? And listen, I've been in conversations with people. And I wanted to say something and then let the person talk. Uh, okay. I didn't need to say that. I'm not going to say that. Or those words I had, they were. No. Nah. That would be improper to say it. Or that has nothing to do. I thought it had something to do. But actually it don't. Again it's the sin of the mouth. The sin of the lips. And being too quick. To speak. If a ruler hearkens to lies. Oh if it wasn't after the election. I would have a field day with that verse. If a ruler, and you want me to say president, and I do say president, and I do say House of Representatives, I do say Senate, I say a king, a queen, a governor, a prince, police, judge, your boss, a father of a house, a pastor of a church, somebody who has a authority where their life rules by a standard, what a ruler is, if he hearkens to lies, all his servants are wicked. A lying king or ruler would only want liars around him. And again, they're going to say, people say, well, we ought to have Christians in politics. Why? The worldly politicians would not want the Christians around them. And if you're going to make a bad apple into a, a bushel of apples, the, the bushel of apples to go sour. 
What do you think when you got a whole bushel of bad apples is going to do to a good apple? Now, the fact is, a Christian doesn't belong in politics. A Christian need deserve to be out there preaching the gospel, needs to be praying, needs to be reading his Bible. You know, they say, we need Christians in politics. And does not Paul write to the Corinthian church that we ought not to be with the ungodly? Ought we not to separate ourselves? We want to send a Christian into politics. No, we want to send Christians into church fellowship, not into the world. And that liars want to be around liars. And if you do have an honest person, they're going to try to get rid of that honest person or they're going to try to make that person like them. And the theory of evolution is not that things are getting better and brighter and wonderful, is things are getting terrible, rotten, and decaying. And you may have a golden piece of coin. And if you throw it into the sewer, what is surrounding that golden piece of coin? And that would be the same thing to take that Christian and put him into politics. The book of Daniel. Four men. And at the end of the book of Daniel, how many men le learned and served right and did right with the government? Four men. Four men. I think Nebuchadnezzar got right and he fell out. He Dyrus got right. And Daniel remained right, but he had all the presence against him. Shadrach, Meshach, Inigo did right, and yet he had these people against them to turn them into the government. But at the end of Daniel, the government didn't get right. Now, thank God for Daniel, Chadrach, Meshach, Indigo doing right. But it didn't improve the government because Babylon fell in the midst of Daniel. And it's to God's glory that Daniel, Meshach, Indigo did not fail their testimony. Today, if you were to put Christians in government, they would fail because they don't have the faith. They don't have the strength. They don't have the prayer. They don't have the knowledge of the scriptures that Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had. The poor and the deceitful man meet together. And the Lord lightened both of their eyes. God can deal with a poor man. And the light is Jesus Christ today. Oh, well, God can't save the sinner and the deceitful man. And God will give light to that poor man just as much as that poor sinner. God will give them light. The king that faithfully judges the poor. Faithfully judges the poor. If that poor man is guilty, he's guilty. If that poor man is innocent, he's innocent. He's not guilty because of sex, creed, 
status, or color. <coughs> He's not innocent because of color, creed, sex. The judgment is if he's guilty, he is guilty. If he's innocent, he's innocent. His throne shall be established forever. There is one throne that is established forever, and that is the throne of Jesus Christ. And the throne of Jesus Christ is forever. Correctly. Rightfully. Judging. Without fail. And when Jesus Christ comes back as the second advent. If you are a sheep nation, you get put to the right. I don't care of your political beliefs. I don't care of your color. I don't care of your, your sex. I don't care of your age. You know, when, when Jesus comes back and the sheep nation, you know they're going to be poor because they did not receive the mark. And there'll be, when Jesus Christ comes back, there'll be the goat nations. They'll be put on the left. And I don't care about their political affirmation. I don't care about their color. Don't care about their race. Don't care about their sex. Don't care about how much is in their pocketbook. If you are a goat, you go on the left. If you are a sheep, you go on the right. And the goats go off into hell and the sheep go off into the millennium. And Jesus Christ sits down at the throne of David and he sits down on that throne and he sits there forever. And I don't care if Donald Trump gets the re-election. I, I don't care about politics. And if he gets the election seven years later when Jesus Christ comes back, If he has received that mark and gone for the Antichrist and gone against the Jews, he is a goat. I don't care what the Christians say behind Jesus Christ and horseback. We voted for him, Jesus. He's a Republican, Jesus. Depart from he, workers iniquity. I never knew him. And if he's poor and doesn't receive the mark and helps the nation of Israel, he gets put off as a sheep. That goes true for Biden or Biden. That goes true for the Clintons. That goes for the Bushes. That goes for any, any of the, the Reagans that are surviving. That goes for the Carters. That goes with anybody. At the seventh year of the tribulation, when Jesus Christ comes back, he does not care if you're white. He doesn't care if you're black. There's no Black Lives Matter. He doesn't care if you're yellow. He doesn't care if you're red. He doesn't care if you're politics. He doesn't care if you're, if you're what race you are. He doesn't care what religion you are. If you are a sheep, you go on the right. And if you are a goat, you go into the left. And if you've got the mark on your right hand or your forehead, you're a goat. And that is the king that faithfully judges the poor. And he won't take any bribes, what we, what we learned earlier. And he's not going to show favoritism. It's going to be at the second advent. Of it's going to be correct, righteous judgment by God Almighty. There'll be nothing less. And there'll be nothing more. 